Sepultura. The reason why I decided to go with this classic album of a month is obviously Quadra album, which came out only a few weeks ago. Now it's time for my personal Sepultura favorite, and this one is called Arise. Released in 1991, Sepultura was already kind of a big name in the genre, or at least it had three full albums out, and also quite a few uh, smaller releases, not to mention that the band had already been active like something like seven years. So what makes this album worthwhile listening to? Well, there are many reasons, in my opinion. Um, during 1991, we have to remember that death metal was kind of a new thing. And um, the reason why I mentioned death metal is obviously the fact that uh, this is so often uh, reminded or talked about as kind of a death trash album. While clearly more trash metal than death metal, uh, Arise is still an album that kind of uh, puts together some... Um, well, different elements of various genres. And um, I think uh, Arise is kind of a, the peak moment of these kind of hybrids. Um, I've got my copy of this album. I think it was second-handed already in the time. And this was, I would say, roughly mid-90s. I don't remember exact year, not to mention other than that. But that was the year when I just had gotten into... The band so a little bit late for this album i think i started with chaos ad basically and i remember instantly falling in love with being 18 years of age and all that stuff so obviously i had to dig a little bit more into the past and that's when arise came to me along with beneath the remains and such but even though i like beneath the remains and chaos ad obviously Arise was the one that got me really going on. It was the one album that made me tick. That is, it so nicely blended what I had been listening to. Trash metal, basically at least the most Metallica. And obviously death metal was very much my game. So this kind of uh, blended two different favorite styles of mine into one and made it just sound like a wonderful thing. Now, Arise is filled with really classic killer riffs. Basically every song is made of some awesome parts, superior to many many other albums in the genre B trash or death metal, and it all made it made sound just wonderful combination. And not only those riffs, their guitar solos, their lead guitars, massive drumming which is versatile and technical and also has the sort of groove that so many other drummers don't have. So everything was just right there for the taking. Now, still, after almost 30 years after it came out, it seems like Arise sounds like a timeless album. I mean, the guitar sound is right there, it's not too clean, it's not too posh, but it's not dirty either. It's not like some demo level recording, but very much done by a band and studio and who knows what kind of engineers of sound and whatnot that, you know, understand this kind of music. The guitar sound sounds kind of a strong and even to some degree massive, but mostly it's about finding the right tone for, you know, riffs and guitar solos, leads and whatever. And everything is just like almost perfectly in place. I would like to say there are no weak moments on this album, but that would be maybe kind of an overstatement. Well, maybe weak is too strong a word for that, but I mean there are some parts which are not perfect. Then again, which album does not have that? So even with those elements which are there to, I guess, balance things out and make things more interesting, you know, more versatile in terms of being trash album and kind of a death album at the same time. Arise is something that, you know, all those little details, they, pay, they play their role and they make a lot of sense. Now, there are bands which just sometimes have nice gimmicks and are just unable to execute them in a nice way. I'm talking about, like, spoken parts, samples, 
interludes and whatnot. But Arise has even those just right. They are there to kind of a pace the album in a way that it keeps you interested the whole time. It's not just fast tempo, it's not slow tempo, it's not just moving on from one song to another and let's hope that it works just fine. It is kind of a flawless in my opinion. I mean, everything is there, once again, to make sense, to play its role out in a wonderful way. And on top of that we have Max Caballera having his voice in a nice raspy tone, which is kind of a trashy, but a little bit kind of a death metal growly as well. It's dirty for sure, it kind of a lets out the punk past, the, bands, the band that was inspired by punk music also, not just metal music, and they let it sound through the music just in a wonderful way. Now, even with the cover, that kind of complements this weird extreme metal release in a wonderful way. It catches your interest. There's this eye in the middle of the album, and then there's this weird creature which is kind of a, like building or hybrid of sorts. And if you take a look at the details, it just kind of shows the era when death metal was all about these uh, detailed covers, sometimes very bizarre, even surreal things. And if this is not surreal cover, I don't know what is. There's a lot of same kind of feeling that, for example, bands like Morbid Angel has. So it's kind of a beautiful and detailed, but it's also like, what the hell is going on? And I think this totally kind of nails it. Also, it's kind of a funny that this album, throughout the whole idea, it is of brown colors. It is like a detail of its own, you know, unlike many albums, especially in black metal genre, where, you know, black and white obviously dominate, but also colors of red and stuff like that. Then there are albums which are all the way dominated by blue. Dissection, I'm calling you. Oh, what a rhyme. Um, but this is all about this kind of a brown theme, which then again adds kind of a, a layer of sorts to the album. So we could say it's simple to raise the, the brown album, where again, West Metal with Caster, self titled albums, the black album. I don't know how intentional it was from the beginning, but looking at the past in a kind of a retrospect, it kind of makes sense. They totally took distance from Beneath the Remains, which is more about this classic. Uh, black and red, if you will, and a little bit orange, maybe. But this is the kind of a scheme of its own. I don't know, but for me, Sepultura made its peak moment right here. Obviously, they create a wonderful amount of good songs, or at least good riffs, along the way since uh, this album as well. But I don't think any album after that, or even before this, managed to reach the heights what Arise managed to do. I mean, Beneath the Remains is a good album, so is KSAD, but with Roots, it all started to go into a different direction, and I don't think they ever managed to get back. Now, I don't want to be a purist, so I'm not going to say Sepultura without Cavalier Brothers is the same, but obviously, they paid their role. They had their role, and, you know, it made a lot of sense how Sepultura would sound. But if it wasn't for the riffs and guitar work of Andreas Kisser, well, the band wouldn't be the same either. Be it as it may, Sepultura is it, it's a different band nowadays, even they, though they still are kind of a honest to the roots and respectful and all that stuff. But Arise is a piece of work that, in my opinion, is something that should be on the star map of metal. That is, it kind of deserves to be there, shining its inspiration for many generations to come, many people to find metal music just now in 2020. So, to celebrate Great Sepultura, <clears throat> remember to listen to Arise and understand how dead and trash marriage was made in hell. Or heaven, who knows. Thank you for watching. See you soon with more Rauta Classics coming your way.